Mary Morrison, has a life to envy. She lives in a massive house with her husband, and her twins. Besides that, she is a New York Times best-selling author. One day, her publisher asks a huge favor from her. He wants Mary to write another book, to help the publishing house from a crisis, but Mary immediately refuses. He asks Mary to reconsider, and leaves his offer on her table. Later that night, Mary's husband, Tom comes home as Mary is preparing dinner. Tom sees the documents that the publisher left, and asks Mary to reconsider her decision. But Mary dismisses this, and tells her family, to prepare for dinner. After putting the twins to sleep, Tom makes love to his wife. After their session, Tom confesses that he lost some money. He made a trade six months ago, and lost half of their reserves. Mary gets furious. She couldn't believe that her husband could lose such a huge amount. A few days later, Mary discusses the book offer with her friend, Elaine. Elaine suggests her to take that offer. Moreover, after finishing the book, Mary's life could return to normal. But Mary says, that she turns into an entirely different person when she writes. Elaine recommends Mary to hire a nanny for her children. This could help Mary write easier, and worry less about the twins. Mary reluctantly agrees to it. Elaine recommends one of her clients, a headhunter for nannies. Following Elaine's advice, Mary meets with Angela. Angela tells her, that she could send some girls over for Mary to interview, and Mary agrees. Mary interviewed several girls, but none of them met her standards. Over the phone, Tom convinces Mary to give them a chance. Another girl arrives, and Mary immediately ends the call. After preparing some tea, Mary noticed that the girl was reading a book. She was glad to see a young person reading, she thinks it would influence her kids. The two of them immediately bond over their love for books. The girl introduces herself as Grace. In the middle of their conversation, Mary receives a call and excuses herself. She overhears Grace talking to her kids, and they both seem to like her. Grace was natural, when it came to the twins. Mary finally decides to ask, if Grace would accept her job offer. Mary clarifies that, she still isn't sure if she'll need someone full-time, but needs some help since she's starting a new book. Grace immediately agrees, and hugs Mary. The following week, Grace starts her new job. Elaine, who was visiting Mary, was impressed with Grace. As Grace and the kids were playing, Elaine and Mary cleaned around the house. Then, Tom arrives and introduces himself to Grace. Elaine immediately gives Mary a look, but she is oblivious. Mary says that Tom wouldn't try anything with Grace, but Elaine is still doubtful. Later that evening, Tom and Mary make love in the pantry, while Grace looks after the twins. The couple now has more free time, since Grace is there to assist with the chores. The following day, Mary injured her feet when she stepped on some broken glasses. While Grace was bandaging her, Mary couldn't help but stare at Grace's chest. Mary suddenly suggests having a shopping trip with Grace. Grace thought it was too much, but Mary wanted to thank her. While looking at her new bra, Grace brings Mary's hand to her chest. Later that night, Mary asks for Tom's opinion about plastic surgery. Mary wonders, if she should undergo a surgery herself. But Tom says that she is already the most beautiful and brilliant person, even without any surgery. The next day, Mary was experiencing writer's block, and decided to smoke outside. While she was smoking, Mary saw Grace changing. She watches Grace put on her clothes, and admire them in the mirror. Mary's thoughts were suddenly interrupted, when she heard her publisher's voice. She was daydreaming of Grace, while she was in a meeting. Later while working out, Mary tells Elaine about her daydreams. Elaine thinks that it might all just be in Mary's head, or because Mary is sex-starved. But Mary says that couldn't be the reason, because Tom is excellent, and she has no complaints. Elaine warns her that it might just be Grace's plan. She jokes that Grace might be seducing Mary, and plans to take over Mary's family. When Mary comes home, she finds Grace and Tom talking by the fire. Tom reminds Mary that they have a fundraiser to attend to. Elaine, and her husband Rick, happily greets Mary and Tom at the party. As Elaine dances with Tom, Rick and Mary talk about her upcoming book. Mary confesses that she don't want to write it. Rick says that the fourth book in the series is his favorite, just like everybody else. Mary shares, that she wrote it during a very dark time in her life. Now, with her seemingly perfect life, she finds it hard to write another one. 
Rick advises Mary, to lean into the dark, because it's where her best stuff comes from. The next day, Mary was lounging by the pool as she tried to write again. She asks Grace to put some sunblock on her back. Mary suddenly jumps into the pool, and takes off her bathing suit. Grace shyly jumps in the pool, and the two women enjoy their swim. After their swim, the two of them danced around, until they were sweaty and tired. Grace begged Mary to never let her go, and started tearing up. Mary hugs Grace, and promises that she will never let her go. She comforted Grace until they both fell asleep. Mary suddenly wakes up, with Grace going down on her. She was surprised, but when she opened her eyes, Grace wasn't there anymore. On the night of the twins' recital, the two women kept stealing glances at each other. Mary tells Grace that what happened on the sofa, shouldn't happen again, and that they should never talk about it again. But Grace doesn't know what Mary is talking about, so Mary lets the topic go. The next day, Mary takes a soak in the bathtub. Grace enters the room again, with some petals and milk. Then she massages Mary's scalp, and body. The pleasure builds, as Grace massages Mary's lower region. But when Mary opens her eyes, she was all alone in the bathroom. It couldn't just be her imagination again, the petals were still there. One day, Elaine sees Tom with Grace, so she immediately calls Mary. However, Mary ignores her call, since she is in her writing zone. Tom and Grace head to a restaurant. Grace seems to be more carefree, and playful than usual, which surprised Tom. Grace was even dancing to the music on their way to home. Three weeks later, Mary and Grace decided to have a picnic by the water. The two ladies ended up kissing passionately, but Mary stopped it before it could go any further. They decide to return home, but the tires of their bikes were slashed. Mary tries dialing Tom, but sadly he wasn't answering. Since they went home on foot, it was already dark when they arrived. Tom and Elaine were arguing, but stopped as soon as they noticed Mary and Grace. Elaine warns Mary that if Tom isn't getting it from her, he might be satisfied by someone else. Mary couldn't believe, that Elaine thought Tom might be cheating on her. She starts to get mad. Mary doesn't get why Elaine was being like this, and asks her what her problem really is. Elaine was about to argue some more, but she stopped when she saw Grace approaching. She says goodbye, and tells Mary that she only wants what's best for her friend. While Tom and the twins are out, Mary helps Grace to prepare dinner. Grace tells Mary how beautiful she is, and starts touching her sensually. She goes down on Mary, and Mary couldn't help but enjoy the experience. They were interrupted, when Tom and the kids arrived. Mary excuses herself, and lays on her bed. When she wakes up, she sees Grace seducing Tom in the kitchen. Tom was blindfolded, as he went down on Grace. Seeing the horrible scene, Mary faints and lands on the floor. When she wakes up, she is back in her bed. It might all just be a bad dream. The family gathers in the dining room to start dinner. Mary suddenly asks Grace, what she is still doing in the house. Tom was surprised with this, but Grace says it was fine. Mary suddenly shouts, and asks why Grace was fucking her husband in the kitchen. Everyone was surprised by her words, even the twins were getting scared of their mother. Mary immediately apologizes, and tells them that when she writes, her dreams get so vivid. Back in their room, Tom tries to talk to Mary. Mary had an outburst again. She was tired of spending all her energy building a life with Tom and the kids, and never doing what she loves. She was also angry at Tom for messing up their life and expecting her to always clean up the mess. Tom apologizes, and tries to comfort his wife. Later in the night, Mary gets up to smoke by the pool. However, when she opened her cigar case, it was empty. Her bad dream suddenly flashes in her mind, Grace was smoking one of her cigars. Mary heads into her office, and grabs her manuscript. In the morning, Mary calls the nanny agency about a check she sent them, that hasn't been deposited. The agency tells her, that they are actually waiting for her to choose a nanny. Mary soon discovers, that they don't have anyone named Grace in the company. Since Elaine wasn't taking up her calls, Mary decides to visit her office. She enters Elaine's office, but is shocked to see her bloodied body. Elaine was stabbed in the neck, with a pair of scissors. The investigators invite Mary for interrogation. Mary has become the primary suspect. They had a video of her, leaving the office at one in the morning, and the scissors were full of her fingerprints. Additionally, 
the case was highly similar to the book Mary was writing. Before Mary could incriminate herself even more, Tom arrives with her lawyer. She then leaves the station to look for Grace's address, and meets her aunt. She discovers that Grace had a troubled childhood, and was abused by her parents. It turns out that Grace worked for the gym, and overheard Mary and Elaine's conversation. She tried applying to Angela's company, but was rejected. She stole Mary's address from Angela's office to track her down. On returning home, she discovers that Tom was stabbed by Grace. Grace tries to clean up Tom's blood, and denies her involvement. It turns out that Grace has another personality, Margaret, and she wants to kill them all. Mary fought with Margaret, and was able to hit her on the head with a vase. One year later, Mary and her family are safe and happy now. She finally finishes her book, and left a copy on Elaine's grave. Then she visits Grace, in a mental facility and plays with her. The movie comes to its end. Thanks for watching. Enjoy other movie explanations on our channel.